Okay, in this video, we're going to show you how to create pivot tables when your data is not in a single range. So recall every pivot table we've done so far, the data is in a single range. Okay, and that's just not always going to be the case. So here's an example. So the Q1 worksheet has sales of planes, trains, and cars in Asia, Europe, and United States in quarter one. The Q2 worksheet has this data for quarter two. The Q3 worksheet has this data for quarter three. The Q4 worksheet has this data for, Q to, uh, for quarter four, sorry. So we'd like to consolidate this in a single pivot table. So in other words, we'd be able to get sales of planes, trains, and cars during all four quarters of the year. And I think you can see that this situation pops up a lot. You might have a worksheet for every state or for every country in the world where Microsoft sells stuff. You might have stuff in different worksheets. Things would work the same way. And so let's show you how this works. Now the key is, and why most people don't know how to do this, is something disappeared from Excel, I think, in 2007. If you do Alt plus D plus P, and I'll show you an easier way to get this on your uh, quick access toolbar in a second, this brings up what's called multiple consolidation ranges. And that's what you need to do the pivot table on multiple ranges. So it's very straightforward. Very simple once you know this. So I'm hitting Alt, let go, D, and P. And see, now there's a button for multiple consolidation ranges. Okay? I'll check that. Now I go next, and I just, collect, I just select all my data, and I'll have a pivot table. It's not quite as beautiful and nice as our previous pivot tables, but it sort of gets the job done in workmanlike fashion. So if I click Next, okay, Create a single page field. I'm not going to worry about page fields. Okay, in other words, page fields are ways you can group the different worksheets. But, okay, so now I'm going to go to the Q1 worksheet and select the data and click Add. Next, I'm going to go to the Q2 worksheet. And actually, Excel's learn actually has guessed the data. It's in the same place. It doesn't have to be, but that's going to make my life easier. Go to the Q3 worksheet, click Add. Now go to the Q4 worksheet and click Add. And see, I've got all my data now. You have to do this just once. Now, if you refresh, basically, if you change the data and you refresh, things would update automatically and things like that. But now I'll click Finish, and you can see what this table is going to look like. Okay, so there you go. So this is our pivot table. So we've got total sales in the four worksheets in Asia of cars is 280. Total sales in Europe of planes is 360. Now, how can we filter on this? Well, we can click on row labels, and we could just do Asia in the US if you want. And on column labels, if you want, you could just show planes and trains. OK, so now we've got the totals for planes and trains. And you can even put a slicer in. Insert, slicer. Let's just do a row slicer. Now that's going to be on the regions of the world. And you can see I filtered on Asia and Europe, and I can get them all back. Asia and USA. Now I've got them all back. And I could do a, do a column slicer on the products. Now, finally, what about the pages up here? These are like the four worksheets we have. So in other words, I could just select item one if I wanted, and that's the first range I selected, which is Q1, and now I get the totals for Q1 there, okay? I've got planes and trains, trains sorry, in Asia, Europe, and the U.S., and I could double-click on anything here to show you the source, show myself the source data, but that, in summary, is how you can do a pivot table on multiple ranges. Okay, you may not like that old DP. It's sort of a pain. So you can put the pivot table wizard, as this is called, on the quick access toolbar. And this is useful in other ways, too, so it's a good tip. File, options. Let's go quick access toolbar. Commands not on ribbon. So there's a ton of things here, which I don't probably use. And you may use a couple of these that may have disappeared as Excel has changed versions, but they're sort of all here. So if I go pivot table wizard, not to be confused with pinball wizard, and I can add that to my quick access toolbar. You can move things up and down if you want to 
basically arrange, rearrange things. And I recommend that you put things you do a lot, like I hide columns, unhide columns, I fill colors, and basically I do shapes a lot. So I put those on my quick access toolbar. Now that pivot table and pivot chart wizard, okay, see if I click on that, I get the same thing as old DP and I don't have to worry about that. So that I think is quite useful. Okay, now again, the same trick would work if I had my four ranges of data in, let's say, four different worksheets. I just have to go through, keep them all open, and select those ranges. And again, if I change the original data in refresh, it's going to update automatically. This is really cool and really expands your repertoire of the situations in which you can do pivot tables. Okay, so thanks for watching, and, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book, which is here. And with that one, you can see it's four point something, or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so, yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.